Welcome to part three of my homemade CNC build. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for this because I believe part two was about seven months ago now, which uh, isn't great. Uh, I don't have any valid excuses other than working on other projects. So uh, let's just get started with the rest of the build. This part three will cover the Z axis and the Y axis build, which required some more place to be cut on my old CNC router, which as I mentioned, I'm not going to make any excuses. But the PC that controls this older CNC recently died and now fails to boot. So I had to source another PC that will run Mac 3, which needs to be Windows XP and have a parallel port to connect to the CNC. Fortunately, Facebook Marketplace was a good source for such ancient technology and I was able to get it back up and running. Then I had to tap a total of 22 threads in the Z-axis plate, which will be used to mount the linear rails and the spindle, as well as countersinking some holes where some bolt heads need to be flush with the plate. Then I can loosely attach the linear rails with several bolts, as this would allow for alignment of the rails so they're perfectly parallel which can be done by sliding on one linear bearing and attaching a dial gauge with its strong magnetic mount. Revealing the rails aren't perfectly parallel yet. So with a small adjustment, it's looking far better. Then I can attach this aluminium part that will bolt onto the ball screw nut with some 5mm spacers to raise it away from the plate. And this is attached with the countersink bolts as the spindle will eventually mount on this side of the plate so they need to be flush with the surface. Then the rest of the linear bearings can slide onto the rails, which I did have a small moment of panic when I noticed one of the bearings was shipped with an unclipped ball bearing cover, meaning two of the balls had fallen out into the packaging. Fortunately, it was a far easier fix than I initially expected and no balls were lost. I then need to remove the x-axis plate off of the machine to attach it to the z-axis plate. It's always an interesting step-by-step -step process when designing a machine like this, because ideally you want every bolt accessible once the machine is built, but that's not always possible, so sometimes things need to be disassembled to fit with other parts. Now because of the ball screw eventually sitting between the rails, these spaces are required to attach the x-axis plate to the z-axis plate, and the rails run nice and smooth. So now the ball screw that will drive the z-axis can be installed by sliding it into the aluminium part that was attached earlier and fixed in place with a few bolts. But then I notice an issue. See this bolt head here? Well, it collides with the ball screw nut. It's not by much, but enough to prevent full travel of the z-axis. To fix this, I just remove the washer from the bolt which isn't ideal, but also isn't a major issue. And now the Z-axis moves perfectly along its full travel. The next step is to mount the ball screw bearing, which is slightly recessed into the aluminium plate due to its strangely designed offset. So this pre-machined pocket should make sure it aligns with the ball screw, which it does, at least once the bolts are loose and it's given a little wiggle. And finally, the ball screw nut can be threaded on, which will prevent the Z-axis from falling due to gravity once it's mounted on the machine. So now I can simply slide this whole assembly onto the X-axis, and it's starting to look a bit more like a CNC machine. I then wanted to see how well the Z-axis moves, but turning the ball screw by hand was too slow, so I added an adapter to attach my electric drill. So now it's time to add the actual motor that will drive this ball screw, which is a NEMA 34 stepper motor. But making a metal mount for this motor is beyond the capabilities of my old CNC, so I've chosen to 3D print the mount. I really wanted to stay away from any structural 3D printed parts, but this is printed as solid as possible with PETG, and only has to withstand the torque of the motor, as it's constrained in all other axes by the ball screw. Once the machine is complete, I might machine an aluminium upgrade, but for now, this should do. On the topic of 3D prints, I also printed this guard that attaches to the top of the Z-axis. It doesn't take any structural loads, it just covers the stepper motor when the Z-axis is at the top, as I couldn't extend the aluminium plate this high because it would collide with the motor. And I also made this large guard that attaches to the bottom of the Z-axis. Though the print quality is awful as this PETG has been sitting in my garage for probably 10 months. And I may have dropped it. 
but it fits fine and will help keep a lot of cutting chips away from the linear rails and ball screw behind the Z-axis plate. And now we can finally attach the spindle. This is a 2.2 kilowatt VFD spindle with an ER20 collet and is air cooled. I chose this because my old CNC ran a 1.5 kilowatt water cooled spindle, which had adequate power for my previous use cases, but the water cooling was a bit of a pain as I only used it once every few months, so the water would get mouldy in my shed and have to be replaced often, so being air cooled should mean less maintenance. However, I don't like this basic fan and shroud design, so I'll probably modify it in the future. But for now, this CNC is really coming together. Let's get started on the Y axis. For this, I have the same 800mm linear rails as the X axis, and they're mounted 240mm apart on these aluminium extrusions. Getting these rails perfectly parallel and also perpendicular to the X axis will take some time, so I'm just attaching these temporarily to show how they'll fit. Then the Y axis stepper motor can be mounted to a plate using these long bolts, as the rear face of the motor needs to mount to the extrusions on the frame. To mount the ball screw I had to make some custom brackets that have holes drilled along their edge, as well as being tapped to attach bolts. This is because the ball screw bearing mount needs to be mounted to the extrusions at a 90 degree angle, so these bolts make up a custom right angle joint, and the bearing mount can simply bolt onto this face. Then the bracket and bearing can slide in between the two Y axis extrusions and be bolted in position, before sliding in the Y axis ball screw. Now I know I said I'm trying to avoid structural 3D prints, but I need to mount a bearing on the other end of this ball screw to support its weight. So I printed another bracket that will mount the support bearing to the frame. This bearing doesn't affect any of the mechanics of the CNC, it's purely there to support the weight of the ball screw, so the printed part will be fine. So that's it for part 3 of the DIY CNC build. Uh, I'm happy with the way the Z axis went together. Um, everything fit and uh, nice and rigid. Uh, the Y axis still needs some work. I haven't tightened anything down yet uh, because I need to make sure that both the rails are parallel as well as the ball screw and also that everything is perpendicular with the X axis. Otherwise we're not going to be cutting very square squares. Uh, I also need to figure out what I'm going to do with the cutting bed. Uh, because the cutting area is 520 millimeters by 520 and finding a thick sheet of metal that size is, for a reasonable price is uh, proven to be quite difficult. So what I might do is buy a smaller sheet of say 16 millimeter thick aluminium uh, that's about 300 by 500 um, and then I can use that for cutting precise small parts in the center of the machine um, and then I might have an adapter plate or make a, get a thinner sheet of aluminium, say 6 or 8 millimetre thick, uh, that will cover the whole cutting area for slightly larger and less precise parts. Um, I also forgot I haven't mounted the X-axis motor yet. Uh, I do actually have the mounting bracket for it here, I cut out a while ago. I just need to remove these tabs and thread a, th thread a few holes, which won't take too long. Um, and then guess the next step is the electronics. I've uh, ordered some shielded cabling for the stepper motors, uh, but it seems they're coming from, seems the cables are coming from China uh, and taking a little while to arrive. But as soon as they arrive, I can start on all the electronics and uh, hopefully we'll be cutting with this thing fairly soon. Hopefully not another seven months time. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough rambling about the CNC machine. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.